welcoming new people into the land. I mean, that was a whole part of the prophecy, as we often go back to our stories, that Creator had four sons that he placed in different parts of, the, of Mother Earth. One to teach the people in the Red World, which is all of North and South America and all the islands in between there, Haiti, Cuba, Jamaica. They would be part of the Red World. They would be taught and guided through that, the teachings that were coming through. We call them the seven sacred teachings. Then there was the Black World. So one brother was placed in Black World to teach that. That included Africa, you know, the Middle East, India was all part of that. And all the Mediterranean countries were part of the Black World. The White World was everything north of that. And then the Yellow World was, of course, you know, Asia and all the way down to, to Vietnam, Cambodia, Japan, clear into uh, Australia. But within that was the human beings. It was, about, it was not about the color of the skin. So with the early contact, say with um, Columbus in 1492, you know, 528 years ago, and these people actually invited them in, welcoming in that this is our brother from the, the white world who's arrived. You know, and then when black slavery, we welcomed them in because we thought this is our brother from the, the black world. We look at the railroads and we start looking at Chinese who are doing all the dynamiting in the, through the mountains. They too were invited in. The early settlers here in Calgary, for an example, and there's a lot of prominent people in the city that talk about the history. Their great-grandfathers talk about the history on how the, the Blackfoot Confederation took them in during the winter months because they did not know how to survive that and gave credit to them for their survival. But it was that welcoming mode that we accepted human beings as human beings. It is a responsibility that, you know, we look at that life is a gift and that we're our first and true identity is that we're all human beings first. You know, our cultural backgrounds gives our, our sense of belonging to a grouping of people, a, a culture. The early settlers that were in the eastern part of Canada when the Iroquois people invited them into the village to feast, they call it Kanata, misinterpreted to Canada. You know, the interpretation got lost, but they were being fed because that was our way of life, to share the gifts of life, food, water, air, the warmth of the fire, the sun, that's the four elements of life. That was to be shared with any human being. You know, and that was misinterpreted that these savages were so happy to be found that they fed them. So when we look at people coming in, that's one of the reasons we ask somebody, so who are you, where do you come from? To give us a bit of their lineage of who they are as a human being, rather than saying, well, I'm Joe Blow, I'm the CEO of such and such. That doesn't tell anything. It gives us a name and a title, but who are you as a human being? So our greetings are that way. When we're out and about, and when I travel and people ask, where do I come from? I'll give them my lineage. I'll tell them the people I come from. I'll give them my grandparents and great-grandparents. I'll go down a list of who I am. Then there's that interconnectedness that is created. There's a relationship of human to human. The reason I say the thing about the color of our skins and stuff, we have this belief that we're all created in the image of our creator, and that's a spirit within us. It has no color, it has no gender, it's a spirit. And that's what the Creator is, a great spirit. And I think any religious group often refers to him as great spirit as well. The body itself comes from our Mother Earth and is built just like her. The hair in your body is to represent sweet grass that grows on the prairie. Your skeleton, your bones, these are mountains and rocks used in ceremonies like a sweat lodge. Your arteries, vessels and veins, these are rivers, streams and creeks. Your heart will pump and pulsate like the core of a mother does. Your breath is the wind. Your tears water upon the earth and they have that healing energy when you allow them to flow without hindrance. And the shade of shell you carry is like a mother. So when we greet people, we greet them as human beings. We don't have anybody in the world that can actually claim the color. And I've done that before, ask people how many people, how many of you are white? And I see hands pop up and then I'll hold the white piece of paper and says, the day you match this is the day I can believe you. And I do that with the black, and I do that with the red and this people, and I do that with the yellow. And that's interesting to watch their reaction. And then I go back to the fact that this, remember, we're all the human beings first. Don't look at the color or the shade of their skin. Go beyond that. And if you're gonna be looking at that, then look at the shade of our mother, the earth. Since when have we been discriminating towards her? We haven't. The connection back to land guides who we are.